Mahal and Dopas estimation for diagnosis of Hexley disease. And in this lecture, I will first I will give a close to the very well publication based introduction, Hamadic modeling and Dopas estimation, and Posier modeling and estimation, uh, concludes and future work. First, let's go to the background. According to the Parkinson's Foundation, more than 10 million people worldwide suffer from Parkinson's disease, and the common symptoms include the trauma, muscle rigidity, and the slowness of movement. According to Max Little, a paper published here in 2009, the Parkinson's disease can be detected and telemonitored by the voice signals, such as the sustained formation arm. This a blood diagram of general voice-based PD detection system is shown here. It's very simple. First, to record the voice and then get the abstract of the feature and then feed the feature into a trained classifier and then make decisions. According to Mac, uh, original paper of Max, that uh, about 91% of accuracy uh, was reported in these which scenarios. However, the performance of the PD detection system will degrade in adverse scenarios. For example, in reverberated scenario, in additive noise scenario, or in nonlinear distortion scenario. As you can see from this plot, this is the reverber in reverberated scenario. The x axis is RT60 reverberation time, ranging from 0.3 to 1.8 seconds, and the, the y-axis is the area under the curve. And as you can see, when, when the reverberation time get longer, the detection accuracy will decrease from 0.9, point, uh, from 90, 90, 91% to around the 83%. And the second plot shows the, uh, the PD detection results for a deep, in a detailed noise scenario. And you can see also, like uh, it's most, even more severe than the, than the reverberation scenario. And the, under minus 5 dB SNR, that's, uh, the, the area under the curve is only 60%. And the, the last one is the in, in clipping scenario. When the signal is clipped, and also it also degrades the performance quite a lot. So another problem with the current PD detection system is that uh, the modeling errors. That's because that uh, there are some assumptions made by traditional feature extraction algorithms that are invalid, especially for uh, for PD detection applications. So in this thesis, we mainly focused on robust feature extraction and also <coughs> investigate on the speech cleanup method for PD detection. And here is the publication list for this thesis. In, in today's lecture, I will mainly focus on the first one and third one, which are about uh, extracting vocal fold related feature, also known as pitch. And uh, the fifth and sixth one, which is about estimating the vocal tract related feature. And the seventh one, which is about automatically quality control for PD detection system. Before we go into details, into these uh, contributions, that uh, <coughs> we first uh, describe the speech production models that will be used uh, across the CSAs and also describe the problems. For voice speech signal, for example, such as the sustained R, which is a quality theoretic. To model the quality theoretic signal, a harmonic model is usually used. In this harmonic model, like there are three types of parameters in equation one. A and B are the par modeling parameters or weighting parameters. Omega is the fundamental frequency. K is the model order. The fundamental frequency is also, also known as pitch, but uh, there is a difference there. 
Fundamental frequency is a physical feature related to vocal hold vibration, and the pitch is a perceptual feature related to uh, human hearing. However, that uh, in most cases, these uh, the the physical feature and perceptual feature give two values they coincide. So in this research, we, when we refer to pitch, we, we mean fundamental frequency. We see them the, as the same. The advantage of using this equation is that uh, the first pitch is the vocal fold related feature, and the second is pitch is an explicit parameter in this model, and it's also verified that uh, using harmonic model based pitch estimation, uh, pitch, harmonic model based pitch estimator is more robust against the noise than traditional autocorrelation based approach. And the second, uh, second, the second model that I'm going to use is the South filter model, which is commonly used for modeling the vocal tract. And equation two shows the, the so-called uh, autoregressive movie average model. In this model, A and B are model coefficients, K and L are model orders, E is the excitation signal, also known as the rescue. And the advantage of using this model is that uh, it's usually that uh, as you can you can imagine that uh, when you when you pronounce something when you say something it's a uh, some it's uh, the air from the lungs and the push the air to the vocal fold and after going through the vocal, uh, going through the vocal fold we see refer usually refer to blood flow uh, it's, uh, so in this equation it's e and then it, after it goes through the vocal vocal fold it will pass through the, your mouth and uh, your lips, which is the model as vocal tracks, which is known as vocal tracks. And this uh, A and B is a, uh, a model for this model, uh, vocal, vocal tract effect. In traditional pitch, uh, pitch estimators, there are some problems. First is the pitch halving or doubling, doubling problem. It means if we have a the, the ground truth is 100 hertz, we may get 50 hertz. If the, for example, if the harmonic order is, uh, let's say, 5 for 100 hertz, but if we use uh, a 50 hertz with the model order 10, we can still fit the signal very well. So we may suffer this problem. And the second one is uh, a trade-off between temporal and uh, frequency resolution. If we want to, we would like to get uh, a better Temporal resolution. We would like to. We would like the segment to be as small as possible. However, based on Farmer round law above, that uh, a good uh, accurate uh, but accurate pitch estimator depends on the length of the signal. So the longer, longer the signal is, the more accurate we can get the, uh, the pitch estimate. So that's uh, clearly a trade-off. And the third one, the in traditional pitch estimators. Usually, a predefined grid is used. That means that we are we are getting chorus pitch estimates usually. And the last one is that uh, the pitch is assumed to be constant, and also the amplitude for a short segment, which is uh, which is invalid, especially for uh, for Parkinson's disease patients' voice. Here is a plot. Of the pitch contour of a, of a PD of P of Parkinson's disease patient's voice versus a healthy speaker's voice, as you can see from the plot, that uh, the pitch contour of uh, the PD uh, of Parkinson's disease speaker's voice has more variations than the healthy speaker's voice. There are also some problems in. Traditional AR model based uh, based uh, vocal tract uh, extract, uh, feature extraction algorithms. First uh, is that they are based on invalid assumption. That uh, it's uh, well understood that uh, for for modeling the voice signal, it's better to use the impulse stream excitation signal instead of white Gaussian noise as the excitation. However, in traditional, for example, at least the square-based AR coefficients estimator or linear prediction method, 
the white Gaussian noise is usually assumed for the excitation. The second problem is that uh, there are some modeling errors. For example, the nasal sounds uh, like N or M contains zeros in the spectrum, which is uh, which cannot be well a very well model by the AR model or require a very long AR, a long order of a, a, long, a large order of an AR model to model it. Here is the plot of the using least, uh, least squares quick hearing uh, method for AR coefficient centimeter versus using least one norm uh, criterion for AR, AR coefficient estimation. So the top, the left, the top figure shows the spectral estimate. The middle one shows the excitation estimate, and the last one, the last big, uh, the the bottom figure shows the uh, speech signal. As you can see from the spectrum, that uh, it turns that it looks like the least least square space of matter has can fit the fit the program very well. However, the least one of matter tend to have a smoother estimate of the, of the spectrum. And also from the middle figure, you can see that uh, the residue estimate, uh, the residue estimate uh, from the least one of criterion method tend to have a sparser residue than the least two of method. So now we tend to like, tend to the contributions of this uh, thesis. We will move to the vocal fold related feature extraction, that is the feature estimation based on harmonic model. The, there are some drawbacks in, some, in the state of art pitch estimation algorithms. The first one is that so the temporal dynamics of the pitch, the harmonic order, and voicing are not uh, are not considered in a consistent way. The second one is that pitch halving and doubling errors. The third one is that uh, they're not uh, very robust uh, against the noise. So in this paper, we propose the basic pitch tracker based on harmonic model. I would like to show a demo of this, uh, this pitch tracker. This is the basic pitch tracker. Why were you aware of your noise? A lawyer would allow your rule. And you can see from the top figure, this is the order estimate. The second figure shows the voicing probability. And the third one shows the pitch estimate. And bottom one is the signal. So in this uh, in this method, we proposed a fully basic harmonic model based uh, algorithm for pitch tracking, and we consider the pitch uh, we consider the pitch harmonic order and the voicing probability and estimate them together. Also, information from the previous segment are taken into account by using uh, marker processes that to remove uh, pitch halving and pitch doubling errors. And the last one. It uh, features a high robustness against noise and low computational complexity. Before we step into the detail of this algorithm, that I would like to first introduce the basin tracking framework. In general, basin uh, basin tracking like it's usually divided into two stages: prediction stage and the update stage. In the prediction stage, we use the transition model and the prior to get the predicted distribution based on the past data. And in the update stage, we use the new measurements to build a likelihood function and then use the base rule and the predicted distribution to get the posterior estimate. The climate future and forward, forward recurrent in hidden marketing can be seen as special cases of these equations. So now we are ready to go into the detail of this algorithm. 
that uh, we, we first formulated the observation equation uh, based on harmonic model. The observed signal is divided into, into, two, into two parts. The first, part, the first case is the voice case. We use the harmonic model to model the, the voice the signal and uh, use the white Gaussian noise to model the, the noise. In the hours case, we simply use the white Gaussian noise to model the noise. Of course, that, uh, when it's hours, it's better to use, for example, uh, like um, uh, a, a color signal instead of a white Gaussian signal. But, the, which, but this problem can be, can be moved, removed by, by doing pre vitamin on the signal first. And these two cases can be written in a complex, compact form as seven. And the uh, UN is the voicing indicator, which is either one or zero. And omega n is a fundamental frequency of each. K is a harmonic order. A is a weighting parameter. And uh, there is another parameter in Vn, which is the noise variance. These are unknown parameters. And we also, next we, we, we specify the transition, the PDF or PMF for, this, for these unknown variables. That we assign, we assign a G prior for the weights to get an analytical form of the, uh, of the marginal distribution. And we use the Jeffrey prior for the noise variance. And for the transition, transition probability for the pitch, harmonic order, and the voice indicator, we use the, the discretized the Gaussian model. And the we, based on the basin tracking framework, we can we formulated an algorithm for this P tracker. And we evaluated the performance of this P tracker on Parkinson disease database. And first of that, I would like to uh, talk about the performance metrics here. The first one is the total error ratio, which is measuring the, the, the voicing detection rate. Voicing detection error rates. The second one is the gross error ratio, which counting the large errors over all the estimates. And the third one is the mean absolute error, which is counting the fine error, the fine pitch error over all the frames. And we compare the, 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 the proposed method with the traditional uh, autocorrelation based approach, for example, PFAC, SWIFT. Uh, a deep neural network based approach creep and uh, also an autocorrelation based method in and the uh, harmonic model harmonic model harmonic model based approach fast LS. And then you can see that the proposed method has uh, a better performance in these three types of performance metrics. We also evaluate the performance on a toy Example here that uh, this is the assessment R and the top figure shows the, uh, this is the under zero dB white Gaussian noise. The top figure shows the the result for P fat. The second one shows the result for E and last one shows the result for the proposed. And you can see that the proposed has a smooth control, smooth as uh, pitch estimate under zero dB scenario. However, there are still some drawbacks in other drawbacks in the traditional pitch estimation algorithms as we put before. First one is the second wise approach, we have this trade-off between temporal and frequency resolution. Second one, white Gaussian assumption might not be valid in reality. The third one is the temporal really in the previous uh, 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 slide, we show that uh, we, we we applied a, a first order Markov process for the pitch, but we didn't consider the amplitude. Actually, we assigned a G prior for the amplitude. And uh, also, by using a predefined grid, we can only obtain cross pitch estimates. In paper C, that we proposed a, a, a sample wise pitch tracking algorithm robust against the color noise. In this method, harmonic model-based p-tracking approach with high temporal frequency resolution 
that features this property. And second, the proposed algorithm are robust against the color noise, since we, we explicitly model the, the noise by AR model. And third one, the micro, first order marketing are used to model the temporal dynamics of the pitch and the amplitudes. The last one is a grid free estimate. Uh, we can obtain grid free estimates of the pitch. To model, to model the speech, instead of um, using the, uh, the, harmonic, the traditional harmonic model, we use the time-bearing harmonic model. So the only difference here is that we, we, uh, we assume the amplitude is time-bearing over time, and also the pitch is also time-bearing. For the noise model, instead of you only using white Gaussian to model it, that we use the uh, time-bearing AR model. With, uh, with very uh, uh, AR coefficients. And the observed model is simply the sum of speech model of and noise model. And uh, to, to, to impose the temporal dynamics into the pitch and the amplitude, that for the pitch, we use the constrained Gaussian Gaussian random walk model. Since we have the prior knowledge that uh, the pitch is, for human speech, the pitch is usually in the range of uh, 50 to 500 hertz. And for the amplitudes, we simply use the uh, Ga uh, Gaussian random walk model. And uh, to obtain a stable AR, AR filter, like we, we instead of directly operating on the AR domain, that we first transform it into the reflection domain. And then in the reflection domain, we use the uh, constrained uh, Gaussian random walk model like to constrain the reflection coefficients in the range of minus one to one. So that uh, we, we are able to get a stable AR filter. This is some results like for, for speech signal and for music left hand left hand side figure the top one is the uh, is the results by using extended time filter the second one is by using raw black wells particle filter and uh, uh, the third one is a pitch control for, uh, estimated by the proposed method and the, the bottom one is the amplitude estimate as you can see Using the extended the extended camera filter is basically based on first order uh, uh, Taylor expansion, which usually need to need to divert over time because of accumulation of errors. And but for the Rob like Wells particle filter, it tends to have a good uh, pitch estimate. Also, as you can see from at uh, around 0.76 seconds, that uh, from the pure uh, from the spectrogram, the false harmonic has the largest energy. And also, the proposed method, also for the force uh, amount, the F also gets a large amplitude estimate. And the right hand figure issues the result for a vibrato flute music signal. The top one is still the extended camera filter approach. The second one is uh, by using out like wells particle filter. And uh, as you can see, the proposed under minus 5, 5 dB bevel noise. As you can see, the proposed uh, has a count of fine and detailed pitch estimates. We also evaluated, uh, evaluated the performance of the proposed method on Paxton disease database. The extended karma filter was, a, was that method we proposed before in a watch paper. The, the, in, the, in the current paper, we proposed the, the UKF-based approach, the particle filter-based approach, and the black wells particle filter-based approach. And you can see that uh, uh, these three type of methods are better than the, they tend to have a better estimate of the pitch uh, than traditional PFAC in swipe uh, uh, harmonic model-based approach and the basic harmonic model-based approach. And especially, the Rob Black Wells particle filter 
tend to have uh, the best performance uh, around the minus 10 to 5 dB, and but uh, while well, the swipe method tend to have the best performance uh, under 10 dB. Next, we would like uh, we move to the vocal tract related to the feature extraction using by using the Pomodoro model. The there are some oh, the, the drawbacks of the state of our art AR or AMA algorithm is that uh, they are based on invalid uh, assumption as uh, I put before that uh, the, the excitation is usually assumed to be white dosing, which is not true for voice voice signal. Second, the background noise is not considered. So in paper F, we propose the uh, ARMA model estimation algorithm. Uh, this model that we use the, the Poder model for fitting the spectral armor load to consider the nasal sounds. And uh, we also use the sparse uh, prior on the excitation signal considering the, the vocal uh, considering for voice signal it's better to use the impulse train like uh, 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 excitation instead of white dosing excitation to encourage sparsity. And also sparse convolution is applied for deriving deriving the uh, sparse residues and denoise. So we we model the, the observed signal as a sum of a uh, armor process and the white box noise. And uh, it can be written in a compact the matrix form as equation 19. And in equation 19, that um, A contains the AR parameters, the B, in matrix B, it contains the MA parameters. E is the excitation signal, M is the noise. Inspired by the inspired by the impulse train like uh, excitation, in, instead of using the least uh, two norm or least uh, squares approach uh, uh, criterion, we use the least uh, one norm criterion to to, uh, to encourage sparsity on the excitation signals. Also, after we get uh, the the excitation signals, uh, we we formulate. Uh, we use this signal and formulate equation 21 to sell to sell the AMA parameters and the iterate with the new two stages. And we evaluated the performance on, on synthetic signal. Uh, this is the plot uh, of uh, the spectral distortion over the uh, over the pitch pitch values. So pitch is uh, ranging from 300 to 500 hertz. That it, 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 it's, uh, it can be seen that uh, the proposed SDR1 PJ method has the lowest signal, uh, spectral distortion than the traditional two norm based approach, one norm based approach, and two stage is the square based approach, and two stage uh, is the one norm for their model based approach. And we also have a toy example. Uh, we tested the, the, the proposed uh, uh, voice the uh, uh, voice the valve signal, and you can see that uh, the proposed method, the top the top figure is the is the frame of voice the valve signal, and the second figure shows the excitation estimate, and the bottom figure shows the spectral estimate. As you can see, the from the residue estimate, the proposed count of uh, sparse residues, and also. The, from the spectral estimate, the proposed uh, tend to have a smooth uh, uh, estimate of the spectrum. However, that uh, there are some still some uh, problems in this in in this uh, impulse train uh, by uh, by imposing the prior of uh, impulse train like um, excitation signals. In fact. That uh, it's uh, also understood that uh, for the gut flow signal, it's more or less uh, uh, it uh, contains a uh, you know, gut closed phase and gut opening phase. During gut uh, 
uh, closed space, that's it's, it's uh, more like zeros. Well, yeah, for the grand opening space, it's uh, nine zeros, or it's, it's uh, also not simple string length. This is what motivated for this, uh, for the next work. So instead, in this work, we use the black sparse prior instead of sparse prior by combining the advantage of non-sparse and sparse algorithms. Black sparsity is imposed on voice excitation, motivated by the quasi periodic and temporal correlated nature of the glottal excitation. The voice, the unvoiced excitation, or mixture of them are modeled by a mixed uh, excitation signal. So, inspired by sparse basic learning, that uh, we, the most important part is that we model the excitation signal with a, a Gaussian distribution, but with a diagonal uh, procedure matrix. And we divided uh, the, the excitation signal into different blocks. For each block, they are shared by a common precision, so that the two, to inspire the uh, block sparsity. And to solve this problem, to solve this model, we use the variational uh, Bayesian method. So the likelihood, log likelihood function can be can be written as a sum of the variational lower bound and KL divergence. The P is the true posterior, Q is the approximated posterior. And uh, we, in, the ex uh, in the expectation step, that we assume that uh, the, the variables in this model can be factorized. And uh, we also assume that uh, the, the posterior, the approximated posterior, has the same uh, distribution or are in the same family of the dis uh, distribution of the prior. And then, as you can see from the equation, the top equation, that's, uh, it's, uh, let's, uh, so the log likelihood, let's see it as a constant value. And uh, the, the, the two terms here construct the variational lower bound. The third equation is the KR divergence. So it's for the KR divergence, it's only when the Q equals to B, Meaning that the posterior, uh, the approximated posterior, is equal to the true posterior, the KR divergence well managed. So we maximize over the variation lower bound by substituting equation 24 into, into the bound equation, then we can get the posterior estimates. And then in the end step, we maximize over the variation lower bound or uh, we we'll maximize the variational lower bound over the model parameters A and B, which are the AR parameters and B and MA parameters. We evaluated the performance of synthetic signals. The black line shows the ground truth for the glottal flow signal, and the top the top uh, red line shows the excitation estimates uh, by using two nonlinear prediction, and uh, and then the two stage is the square approach, one non -list, uh, linear prediction, is expectation maximization linear prediction, and the, the, the proposed uh, variational expectation maximization approach with black size setting to one, and also the proposed with black size setting to eight. As you can see that by setting the black size to one, so the second bottom figure, uh, by setting the Setting the black size to one, that the proposed to have the sparser, uh, uh, sparsest uh, estimates of the residues. And by setting the black size to eight, it can better fit the uh, uh, the glottal flow glottal flow signal. Also, this is the reduction for like for sustained R signal. The black line shows the frame of sustained R signal and the other lines are, have the same settings as the, the previous figure. And you can see that uh, the proposed method, the bottom, uh, the bottom one with black size setting to A20, that uh, it, has, uh, it, uh, it has zeros in the sort of, in the, in the glottal close surface and uh, non-zeros 
but the black spot in the uh, gut opening phase. And this is spectral aspect of different algorithms. Next, we move to automatically automatic quality control for Paxson disease detection. So in paper G, we, uh, we investigated the, the impact of acoustic mismatch between training and the operating conditions due to degradations in testing. We also investigated uh, a variety of speech enhancement algorithms and their effectiveness in improving the performance of PD detection system. Uh, other than that, we also we also propose uh, two approach, a re recording level approach and a frame level approach for automatic quality control. So in this figure, <coughs> in this figure, we, we investigated the different uh, dual reverberation algorithms on the performance of the PD detection system. Well, the candidate uh, the dual vibration algorithm we are considering here is the uh, uh, non-active matrix factor radiation approach marked by uh, which is the orange line and the DNA based approach which is the purple line and the delayed linear prediction based approach which is the green line. As you can see from the plot the non-active uh, matrix factorization based approach and the delayed linear prediction based approach tend to degrade the performance while the DNA based approach tend to have a, a good performance and this is, is plot uh, for, uh, for additive noise scenarios uh, we, we, we use the, the MMIC based uh, no, uh, speech enhancement algorithm and the DNA based algorithm and the codebook based algorithm with the Kalman filter. As you can see, that uh, from these figures, the DNA based approach tends to have a good performance uh, in low SI scenarios, such as uh, minus 6 to um, 2 dB. Uh, the codebook based approach tends to have a good performance in high SI scenarios. And uh, motivated. However, the, in practice, there are possibly infinite number of combinations of different uh, degradations and different types of degradations. So, automatic automatic quality control is important for for the PD detection system to put into practice. So, in this uh, in this paper, we, we proposed a recording level uh, for a recording level quality control approach based on the universal background model, UBM, and the likelihood ratio approach. And also a frame level control approach based on non-parametric heat marketing and the naive phase classifier. And this is the results of, uh, of these two algorithms. So for the recording level approach, based on the predicted labels, the, it, uh, uh, the the proposed method can improve over the nine has uh, improve uh, have a better AOC uh, compared to the nine has in the approach and by and random children algorithm. And we can make the same conclusion for the for the frame level based approach. And it, it can also be shown that uh, the frame level approach tend to have a better performance than the predict uh, than the recording level approach. So to wrap up, uh, robust, feature extra, robust feature extraction algorithms using parametric model, uh, models have been proposed, which are the Hamaki model and the AMA model. And the temporal dynamics of pitch are taken into account to reduce the pitch halving and pitch doubling errors. And not only that, we also consider the, uh, the model order uh, evolution over time, and also the voice state over time. And the sparse or black sparse prior on the excitation signals are introduced for ARMA 
coefficients estimation. Estimation. This is inspired by the uh, inspired by the input string like uh, excitation signals for the voice speech or like the glass of flow uh, uh, model for the voice of speech. Basic based approach have been proposed for these uh, for for these uh, models to sell these uh, uh, to sell these models and effectiveness of a variety of speech enhancement algorithms and deep laboratory algorithms in compensating these uh, degradations are also investigated. So in future, we would like to investigate on the robust feature extraction algorithms that are proposed for PD detection and also investigate on the influence of speech enhancement algorithms for feature extraction. So potentially, like uh, by, by using speech enhancement uh, uh, directly on the noisy speech data or reverb the, reverb the speech data, it may ruin the feature that we, we, are, we, we, we are dependent, we dependent on uh, for, for classifiers. For classifiers. Also, we would like to consider the temporal dynamics of the vocal tracks and the model the model the non stationary and the non Gaussian properties of the noise signals. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have like uh, fifteen minutes break. So we start at two o'clock, two o one. Uh, so I think there is uh, some stuff here if you want to take a break. Do you guys want to have a meeting here or? Cool. Do 15 minutes.